What's happening right now in uh, Syria uh, yep. and what's happening in Iraq and what's happening in the battle against ISIS. Uh, Ian Bremmer yesterday. I saw uh, sent out a tweet that said that Russia now has more boots on the ground in Syria and Iraq in the mm -hmm. fight against mm -hmm. ISIS than does the United States of yeah. America. Um, it seems to me that we're leading from behind and from behind Vladimir Putin it doesn't seem like a safe thing to do. What's, what's your reaction? Well, well, Joe, I think that the, the problem is we don't have a comprehensive strategy. When this war started, August of 2014, two very limited purposes, protect U.S. consulate in Erbil and protect Yazidis on Mount Sinjar from a humanitarian crisis. We've seen ISIL go from Iraq and Syria to now a presence in uh, Afghanistan, Yemen, Somalia. Uh, we uh, just recently dispatched troops to Cameroon to counter Boko Haram, which has sworn allegiance to ISIL, Yemen. So th this is a threat that's mutating. We've spent nearly $5 billion, $11 but, 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 million but, 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 a day. Senator, We've lost all of these service years, members' lives. We, this it, has been it's going, time to really have a, this a, has been, a strategy between right, Congress so, and the Senator, President, and that involves Congress you. being willing to engage, and well, Congress hasn't been willing to do that. Senator, let me ask you then, and the pre I mean, obviously, it all starts with the commander-in-chief, but you actually have uh, 200,000 people, over 200,000 people have died in Syria since this conflict began, and here we are, uh, November of 2015, years later, and you say we still don't have a strategy. Why doesn't the United States of America, after the refugee crisis of unspeakable proportions, after the slaughter of over 200,000 people in Syria, uh, after the arrival of Putin's armies, why do we still not have a strategy? Joe, um, put it this way, we're doing things, but they just don't knit together into a whole. So we are the largest provider of humanitarian aid to Syrian refugees, four plus billion dollars. That's a positive. We've got U.S. forces working with the Iraqi, Iraqi military. I think that's a positive, and I would vote for it. It doesn't fit together because there's frankly three pieces to this crisis. There is the battle against ISIL, there is what to do about Assad and his atrocities, and there is what to do with these millions of refugees, the worst uh, humanitarian crisis since World War II. And the administration hasn't put on the table a strategy that encompasses all three, and frankly, Congress hasn't really been demanding it. What Congress wants to do is criticize the White House, but neither authorize nor stop what the president is doing. Congress is just trying to keep its fingerprints off this, and it's one of the most shocking examples of congressional abdication of an important power, the power to de declare war in the history of this country. Senator Kane, it's Willie Geist in New York. One of the things we've heard again and again from the president was that Assad must go. We had the British Foreign Secretary seated here with us yesterday. He said it's clear Assad must go. If that's true, why hasn't Assad gone? Well, um, I'll give you my intuition, Willie. I think when the president said Assad must go, I think it was probably a little bit of a mistake. He got out ahead of himself. When he said those words, he realized President Bush said Saddam Hussein must go. I said Gaddafi must go. I said Mubarak must go. When the United States has tried to say who the leader of another country should be in this region, we've usually not done a very good job at it. I think after the president made that commitment, Assad must go. He raised expectations in Syria, um, and then he didn't follow through on it because he realized, frankly, the limits of America's ability to, sh to change a regime that did dash a lot of, of hopes and expectations, and that was unfortunate. But look, we, we got to deal with the situation today. Russia is there on the ground. Um, they are, because they're there in, uh, uh, in Syria and propping up the Assad regime, you see ISIL celebrating the downing of this Russian uh, aircraft in the Sinai. And so we, th there is a joint interest between the U.S. and Russia. It's a small overlap in our sort of Venn diagram in terms of bringing stability to Syria. And it's my hope that the discussions that Secretary Kerry restarted in Vienna two Fridays ago might start to pick up some momentum.